Hey guys, I'm Matt, one of the first squad build on this channel. The team is actually going to be a cheap Serie A team, but I'll go more into detail on the prices, the formation, the player stats later. Let's just first have a look and see who's on the team. So in goal, we're going to go with the brick wall himself, Hart Danovic. He's arguably the best cheap goalkeeper in the game. I think he's under 2,000 coins, maybe under 3,000, but he's definitely worth it. He's solid. And at right back, we'll have the Italian, Kyle Walker, in a bat here. Centre back is going to be a pairing of Miranda, who's really good in this game. I think he's probably the best centre back in the league. And we have Manolas. He's the pacey one who's going to cover if Miranda makes a mistake. He's got high defending, great physical, medium high work rate, and he's tall. The pass in weak foot's a bit of an issue, but it's fine if you just do short passes and don't go for the wonder balls. Left back we'll have Insaldi. He's a non rare. Them stats are just so well rounded. He's about 600 coins, and he's just a really, really good player. Okay, so at the two CDM spots, we're going to have on the right, Marquisio, a very well-rounded card. He's got good pace, good passing, great dribbling, good defending, good physical, good shooting. Everything's over 70 on him as well, so you can't really go wrong. He's a very box-to-box -box player. On this side, we're going to have Pereira, uh, pretty similar. He's got amazing pace at 85, good passing, good dribbling, good defending, good physical. He's pretty much similar to Ramirez, I would say, if not better, because he's got 4-star, four 4-star. Four Marquisio has also got 4-star, four 4-star. Four but it's two very well-rounded kind of box-to-box -box players and good at defending at the same time. And in the left cam position, we're going to have Mertens. He's a really good cam. He's got good pace, good dribbling, good shooting, good passing. He's four-star, four-star, so he's pretty much all you need in the cam. On the right side, we're going to have Insigne. He's really similar to Mertens, apart from he's got three-star, three-star. I'm pretty sure he's going to get four-star skill moves pretty soon when they're updated, but then again, I'm not sure. And in the middle, we'll have Dean Natale. For them stats, he's really good. He's about 800 coins, and he's just a really good cam. And at the striker position, it's pretty obvious who we went for. We went for the 91 rated Doombia. Uh, there's not really much more to say is that he's 91 rated. He's got decent shooting, four star skill moves, and he's fast. Right, so as you can see on the screen, the team itself is actually only 21,000 coins. Uh, that's really cheap. That's on Xbox as well, on PlayStation. That's currently 31,000, so again, it's very cheap. You can start an account, do the draft, win an offline division, and you can pretty much afford it. Um, I've also made a, a cheaper alternative if you don't have enough. This is 13,000 to Xbox and 19,000 on PlayStation. It'll play pretty much the same. This Lulich card looks really, really good. I uh, might even use it out on the other account. Um, Nina Gullin is just an all around great player. Perez, very similar to Abate. Perrin is a pretty good 90 reflexes, so he's like a cat in the net. And um, Palacio up top, similar to Doombia, yeah, he's quick, good position, and he's got the finesse shot trait. Okay, so I quickly just want to go over Di Natale as well, because I've honestly never came up against him in this game, and I'm surprised to be honest when you look at his stats. Um, he's got great acceleration, which means he's quick off the mark. He's got Good dribbling as well, he's got 90 ball control which is vital in that position I would say. The ball just glues to him, if you do the power pass you'll control it, you can lay off a pass as well. He's got good finishing which means a lot of people mention that the Cam's the biggest goal scorer on the team and he finishes anything inside the box or outside to be fair. Defending's pretty terrible, no one really cares, he's a Cam. Passing, his passing's good, he's got good free kicks, he can score quite a few. He's got good short passing, good vision, he's got good curve as well, which um, helps with the finesse shots. Physical, it doesn't really matter. Stamina is a bit of an issue, but that's what substitutes are for. Traits, he's got okay traits. The finesse shots are really, really important, I feel. You get so many goals with it. Um, outside the foot, you don't notice. And chip shot, I've never really noticed. And if I had to compare Di Natale to one player, he's fairly similar stat-wise to Thomas Muller. He's got a little bit better pace, he's got a little bit worse shooting, better passing, much better dribbling. He's got worse defending, worse physical, but physical isn't really that big of an issue because it means he has a chance to get pulled down more often, which means he'll get free kicks. Um, he's got better work rates, medium low, because he's in the middle cam, that means he'll sit just in front of the CDMs and he won't come too far back, and he's always in the right position for the short pass. Um, weak foot, skills, similar, and if you compare stats, they're pretty much identical apart from physical and um, defending. And lastly, I just want to quickly talk about this man right here. Uh, if you look, he's six foot tall, he's high medium work rate, which is perfect for a striker. He's very quick, uh, he's got OK dribbling, he's got good shooting with 78 finishing, he's only 2,000 coins, uh, he's passing. Could be better, but it doesn't really feel that bad in game. His physical is amazing with 91 jump and it's 6 foot. He leaps like a frog and his strength is 85, so he can hold off players, which you will see in the clips. Uh, that's about what happened. He's got the finesse shot trait, which is really underrated in this game, I think. 
be fair, I would say Finesse Yard adds about 5 to 10 finishing on top of the stat already, and he tries to beat the defensive line, which means he's always in the right position to run in behind the other team. So the instructions that I have on the players is stay back while attacking on all four defenders. I think that's pretty much standard in every team you have. On the CDMs, could pass in lanes and stay back while attacking uh, for both of them. On the cams, stay forward, stay on the edge of the box for crosses on all three of them. The reason for this is, is just to stop counter attacks pretty much. Uh, they're always there to track back if needed and stay central getting behind on the striker. I'm not sure if balance would be better because then he could drift on the wings and cut in on the fullbacks but I don't know I just stay central it works so why change it? And the reason why I chose this formation to start off with it's because it's probably the most balanced formation in the game besides the 4 and 2 and 2 um, if you play divisions, you'll notice that one of the most common formations that you come up against is the 4-3-3 with a calm. And this just completely shuts that formation down. Um, the two CDMs just cover the calm, intercept the pass before it even gets to them. The defence is always solid and um, because the 4-3-3 doesn't have a central midfield, like a CDM holding mid, um, the three calms just dominate the attack in third and the strikers always getting them behind. The two wide cams kind of act as wingers, which pulls the fullback out of position, and then the striker can get them behind. You can do triangles everywhere. The way I look at chemistry links is the possible short pass. So as you can see, the Inatali is open from everyone. The CDMs can pass to anyone, and everyone has easy access to the striker. So finally, after the introduction, we get into the clips part of the video. Um, before every game I change defensive to cover instead of offside trap so they don't push forward and get caught out. Um, the team we'll come up against is really really good. Arguably the best BBV team you can make. Gordian and Ramos is going to be the perfect test. Uh, this team, the person said it was about 900k to my 20k team. Uh, I think it's going to be a good example of how well it plays. Uh, so instead of just showing like the goals that I get, I thought I'd show some defensive abilities as well. Uh, Abate there, keeping up with Neymar. I should have just cleared it, but I tried to do a pass. Neymar with a ball roll and Miranda with a big tackle there. That could have easily been a goal if he got away with it. And it would have been away with a bad touch from Doombia. Overall, I wasn't really that impressed with Doombia. I think maybe even Higuain would be a better choice. That pass from Dean Natale there was just amazing. Again, Doombia didn't get away. A better striker maybe would have. Right, so here we have Bale on the ball and Mertens just doesn't give him any space. He wins it back. Uh, as you can see, Dean Natale making the run. He does a nice little touch around the defender in anything inside the box. Finesse-wise, uh, Dean Natale is just going to finish it. Weak foot, strong foot. It just it feels so good in game, the finesse shot trait. I think I'm going to look for that like on every striker I use now because it just it does add about 10 finishing to the stat. And here he is uh, running diagonally with Neymar. As you can see Miranda's keeping up with him then he comes in like a wrecking ball and wins it back which is great defending. He's such a good defender on this game. I do put him ahead of Chiellini I think. Just I don't know I think maybe the major medium work rate. Just the fact that he's always there and blocking the ball before it actually gets the pass off or covering the person who's got the high defensive work rate. That long shot there was just terrible. I just thought I'd try it out. Um, so good enough in there by Manalas, he does two big tackles and then he gives away the throw in. He runs marks the player and as you can see he also wins the header which gets the defensive way and that was a possible counter attack, I just didn't really do anything with it. James in the box, a bad eight covering him with that 90 pace or whatever it is, he's just a really good fullback. Miranda again with a big tackle and that sets up another possible counter attack, I don't do anything with it, we end up giving the ball away and then Bale. Sprinting down the wing and Ansaldi keeping up with him and now strengthening him. That's really shocked us about him. That's why yeah, he's in the team ahead of Sandro to be honest. Um, just that one bit of movement there. He's also got four star weak foot. I didn't even mention the skill that Merton's done. Yeah, that was just ridiculous. That little reverse ball there was tasty as well. Nothing came of it but it looked pretty nice. And here Krajkoviak is on the edge of the box. He has the shot and Manlas covers Suarez perfectly. That could have been a goal there if Manlas didn't pull in. I don't know where he came from but again it's great positioning from the defence and that leads for the half time. As you can see it's been quite an even game. This person is a really good player who I was against. I can take anything away from him. He has good pass and he has a good team and he knows how to use it. Uh, we we'll bring on Jerry, I'm just going to call him, probably the best silver card I've used in a long time. That ball from Mertens was beautiful, I think it was Marquisio to Mertens, uh, the bit of drag back, gets a free kick, and uh, Mertens is going to step up to take it. I'm not really good at free kicks, so I always try and do a pass to a shot. As you can see, uh, Jerry is open, I try to give it to him, it doesn't, uh, he gives it to him finally and he gets taken down from behind. If you hold left trigger in the box, you'll always put his back up to the defender, and it normally gets you a free kick, or apparently most of the time. Uh, 
Di Natale's going to step up and, let's be honest, he's never going to miss a penalty. The keeper doesn't even dive. It's quite a bad one. It was meant to go a bit more to the left, but if it goes in, we'll accept it. Not bad. Uh, we're 2-0 up. But again, he is a good player. James is in. Uh, what a tackle by Miranda. He heads it away as well. That's just great defending. And again, the fact that um, you can buy this whole defence for 4,000 coins, it's pretty crazy. Uh, Jerry is through. He's making a bit of space for himself. He finds the gap. He was a good to do the shot, Gordian blocks him, he holds him off like he's a little weak child and plays the ball to Di Natale and again the finesse shot in the box, it always goes in. Uh, Di Natale is one of the most clinical strikers I've used this year, I've used him in so many games. It's the first time I've used him is calm but he's playing really well. You'll be able to see by the end of the game how much he dominates the match. Uh, Di Natale finds the pass to Mertens, Jerry's through, he holds off Ramos and again the finesse shot trade is getting with another goal. Uh, the strength of the striker is really good. He just holds players off. And it really feels like he has about 85 finish and it feels so much higher than 78, but we're not going to complain when he's scoring goals for fun. He has a really good weak foot finish shot as well, in case you're in that position. And at four, this person is going to quit and leave the game. Um, he was a good player. Um, it just, I don't know, maybe I had a bit of handicap on my side. I'm not sure. As you can see, Di Natale had an amazing game. 9.6 rating. The tackles were pretty solid of the defenders, uh, passes complete, Di Natale just absolutely bossed the midfield, 20 out of 28 passes, he controlled the whole game. I think that was a hat-trick from him as well. The silver striker got one goal and yeah, match stats shows how clinical the team were, was. Um, pass and accuracy, again, both very good, 82s, higher than what you normally see in some games. Possession I had more, but it was kind of a midfield game. The message he said was just way too OP. <laughs> which I really do agree. He had a 900,000 team, I had a 20k team, and it is just overpowered. The team we're coming up against next is probably a typical Bundesliga team. Again, the, probably the best goalkeeper in the game in Naya, the best defender in Ramos, Alaba, Hummels, he has a really solid team. I'm going to have to defend against the Bamiang and push against Botang, so it's going to show the whole aspect of the squad. Again, I'm just going to show this whole clip, but when people kick off, a little tip would be, if the top person's taking the kick, always run up, because they seem to sprint diagonally the way that the kick is, if that makes any sense. Uh, that pass by Di Natale was amazing, he is such a good cam. Doombia finally does something, he gets the goal. Again, I'm not that big of a fan of Doombia, I'm afraid to say. He is 93 rated or whatever, he just doesn't feel that good in game. Um, Di Natale with a beautiful pass. I would probably start the Silver Striker, but the way I say it, the team works so well that there's no need to change it. Mertens doing the defensive duties then, keeping up with Bellarabi again, two tackles from like a 5 foot 4 player. Another big tackle from Miranda there gives it to Marquisio, and we are through on another attack for Riaz on the ball. I wanted to give that straight to Doombia, but for some reason it went up to Mertens. I still force it to Doombia anyway, he's clean through, he should probably score in what's FIFA without hitting the post at least once. It was a good attempt, it was a nice run as well. Di Natale with another chip through ball all to Dumbia. Waited perfectly. I got closed down a bit quickly, so I just had to force a long shot. It wasn't very great. Didn't expect it to go in. Pereira to Di Natale. The 1 2 was there. Should have really passed it. I just don't trust Dumbia's passing, and the shot again is stopped by Neuer. Pereira picks up the ball, gives it in Zagi. A nice little fake shot turn, a bit of luck, and I don't know why he didn't use his right foot there. It would have been a goal, but you can't really complain. It's a midfielder. Would have been nice, but we can't do corners. Yeah, Doombia should really be scoring that. That's where I'm thinking if that was the silver striker, it would have been a goal. And yeah, he has a chance to counter-attack, but Manolas just tells Muller to simmer down and the chance is ruined. Di Natale's going to play it out right in Zagi. Di Natale's back on the ball, a beautiful back heel, and that's just a very well-worked team goal. And the finish from Doombia was perfectly in the bottom corner. The replay is going to show it from another angle. But that goal itself was just worked very well. There was a big up passing sequence beforehand, it's just, I didn't want to show the whole thing. That back heel there from Di Natale was just a turn on, and there you can see it creeps right in the corner. I sense the keeper the wrong way. Doombia has got two, and I, st I still don't rate on that I don't know where the goals are coming from. Mertens does the skill moves, uh, and this is where the offside trap kind of comes into play. As you can see, after I did the spin skill move, Peace Check kind of pushed up, and I'm not sure if he would have done that if I was on if he was on cover instead of offside draft. But the rule is to abuse what you can to get the goals. And at half time we have 90% pass and we're absolutely all over this team. Uh, we should be about 5 but the possession 66% all in his half. Um, Doombia is going to come off. We're going to bring on Jerry. 
and he's a really good striker and we're going to actually see how he does against arguably the best goalkeeper in the game in Naya. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, this team has just so many options to pass it to when you're on the ball. You can see here, just a nice little pass and play. That's the silver striker, just manhand the Botang as well. The 85 strength and the height just comes into play quite a bit. I didn't really expect him to get away with that, but he runs into him, Botang, like he ran into a brick wall, doesn't know what to do. In the finesse shot trade against Naya works. I've mentioned it quite a lot of times in this video already, but the finesse shot is so important, I don't know how many times I can see it. Botang with a big block there, I genuinely think that might have winning. And here we'll have a Bamiyang sprinting free, uh, and then Saldi actually comes and does an inch perfect tackle. I was pretty sure that was a foul, somehow we got away with it. A nice little pass and play there again, a bit of luck in Sagi to in the silver strike and a little tap finesse shot. No way that should have went in. I've got no idea. I meant to hold the shoot button down a bit more, but it somehow went in. Then that could be the finesse shot tree as well. A bat here with some woeful defending. He gives it back to the dream destroyer of Bamiyang, and that's probably the only save Handranovic has had to make in this whole video. And it's, it's a really, really good save. That should have been a goal. Muller has about 90 finishing, so he should be putting that in the net, and Handranovic denied it. Mertens with a beautiful pass there to Jerry. Uh, he's in all the space in the world. He's going to cut inside past Hummels. Somehow he stays up. He stays up again and wins the free kick. And then we have Naya with a big kick out. And Manlas beating a Bamiyang in the air. He gives it through to Insaldi. I really wanted to hit it, but we took a touch. We passed it through to Jerry. And if he does have a weakness in his game, it is definitely power long shots. That is any power shot in general. You should be finessing everything with him. Now we'll have Insigne on the ball through to Jerry. The first touch was really good. Again, he uses his weak foot for the shot. Uh, if he used his right foot there, it was probably going to be a goal. He didn't do it. Miranda here, somehow he's keeping up with a Bamiyang, and that was ridiculous. He gets it away nicely, and then well, that's danger averted. And another thing about the striker is the ball does kind of glue to him. Here you can see him just right and tackle after tackle. He's only got about 70 dribbling, but the ball just doesn't want to leave him. Get a bit of a look at the end, but that's going to be the end of this game. As you can see, we dominate this person. As if you look on the bench, you'll see Dinatali got man of the match again. The stats are just crazy on every player. Dribbling, Dinatali 15 out of 20 passes. Is that 34 out of 37 passes from Dinatali? He is so good in the camp position. Uh, definitely try him out. Calm striker. He's one of the best players I've used this year. The silver striker gets two goals. Every game I've used him in, I've brought him on at half time, and he's averaging over a goal a game. I'm going to quickly show the stats of the whole team before I end the video, because it is going on by quite a bit. You can see the stats there, we're all over this player. 13 shots on target, 14 tackles, 86 blends pass, and it was just a good game. So just to end the video, I'm going to show you the stats of every player I've got. I haven't even looked at these myself, so it's going to be new. I have a rough idea of how well people have done, but let's have a look. Handanovic, I bought him for 2,400. He's played more games than everyone else, because like I said, this was a fitness team and he's been in both. Abate, 1,300 coins, 10. He's got one assist, he hasn't scored. Miranda scored one. It was actually a weak foot volley from a corner. I never really expected. I wasn't recording for every game. I only showed two games in the clips, otherwise it would have dragged on way longer than it already has. 10 games for man last he hasn't done anything, but he's a rock in defence. And Saldi, again, mainly defensive wise. 7 assists from Marquisio is quite impressive. 4,600, the most expensive player on the team. Pereira is one goal scorer. I'd actually expected a lot more from him. I'm pretty sure he's got an assist, but apparently not. And Zagi, again, I was expecting a bit more. He's a solid player. And I'm pretty sure I've said his name three different times already. Uh, looking at Di Natale, 10 games, 7 goals, 6 assists. That's really good. Playing off the striker. Um, he is just such a good player. I'd recommend him in any team. He just, like, the two games I recorded, he's got man of the match. I wish I showed you how many man of the matches he's actually had. For under a thousand coins, he's definitely worth it. Mertens, quite expensive. Similar-ish stats to Di Natale. Uh, less goals, obviously, but same assist. Again, he's a very good player. Um, definitely worth the coins. And Doombia up top. I didn't think he actually scored that many. Six goals in ten games isn't, maybe he's not as bad as I put him out to be. He is a quite a good player, but... Um, I would definitely recommend buying this player over him. 12 goals in 9 games. Every game he's came on at half time. So he could effectively half the games played. So he is just a really, really good player. I'd definitely pick him up. 1,800 coins. And 
And as you can see from every player stats, uh, this team has goals coming from every different player. It's a very well-rounded team. I definitely recommend trying it for about 23,000 coins. Even if you don't like it, you can sell it back on and lose literally nothing on tax. And now I'm just going to quickly go over the pros and cons of the team. Um, the price is a real plus. It's about 4,000 coins for the pair. And this just so solid together. It's definitely worth buying. Interceptions, as you can see in the games that I played, I was against Suarez and Aubameyang, two amazing strikers. I didn't concede and they really did just intercept anything that came close to them. Pace was a quite good. Miranda, as you can see, kept up with Aubameyang in one of the clips, which just should never happen. Heading, they seemed to win all the uh, goalkeeper kicks and that was never really an issue. For the cons, passing, I guess, could be an issue. I didn't notice it, but if you do long passes, they're probably not going to connect. Just keep them short and you won't really notice an issue. And shooting, again, I never really shot with them. But I guess if you go all out attack and you're desperate, you won't really get a goal with Manalas and he's 19. And now going on to Di Natale, who in my mind is arguably the best player in the game. Um, his pros are shooting, passing, first touch, ball control and acceleration. His finesse shots are just unbelievable. Anything in the box, he should score if you finesse it. Weak foot, strong foot, it doesn't really matter. Passing, as you can see in some of the clips, he was just clinical with the passing. You can find a through ball to Doombia over and over again. His first touch is unbelievable. The ball just glues to him whenever you do the power pass. His ball control, he always keeps it close when he's dribbling. So that paired with the 84 acceleration makes him feel a bit quicker than he is. And the cons would be pace. Now by pace, I mean he isn't exactly a Mertens pacey player but he's quick enough to get past most of the defenders. Now on Adumbia, uh, his pros are pretty obvious. You can see by the card that he's got good pace. Uh, his shooting's fairly inconsistent. I found the card itself was quite inconsistent. Um, some games he was really good, and then the other games he was just like not there at all. His first touch lets him down. He's finishing on his weak foot, isn't that great? And he's passing. Uh, do you really pass with Doombia on that pace? I'm not sure. And finally, we'll look at Jerry, arguably the best player on the team. It's a toss-up between him and Di Natale. They're both really good players. His pros are his pace. He's very quick. His strength, he's got 85 strength. And you can see he was holding off the likes of Inform Gordian and Botan Ramos. He's just unbelievable. His finesse shot is really good inside the box. Weak foot, strong foot. His finishing feels about 90. His first touch was much better than I expected. The ball didn't really bounce off him that much. His heading's very good. He's got 91 jump and 6 foot and about 80 heading stat. He's really good when it comes to that. And his position, and maybe this is down to the trait he has, beating defensive line, but he's always on the shoulder and getting him behind. If I had to pick a con, it would be his long shots. That's the only really thing, but you should be finessing it with him anyway. Don't really go for the power shot or you won't score that many. And that being said, this is actually going to be the end of the video, finally. It dragged on way longer than I thought. In my head, it was only going to be about 10 minutes long. It ended up being 20, so I apologise if it dragged on for you. It's been the first video I've made in about three years, so go gentle in the comments if you leave any. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And yeah, thanks for watching.